Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and the visionary of the Valder Beebe show, God Talk. Some people talk to God and others believe that God talks to them. Join us in conversation with authors, religious clergy, metaphysicians, and regular people like you and I and God Talk. God Talk is a podcast available on FM Radio, Roku TV, and online. Subscribe at ValderBBShow.com. You can also subscribe at YouTube.com slash ValderBBShow. Join the conversation of God Talk. I'll see you there. Hello. Melissa. Melissa De La Cruz, and my audience to know she's back, and I'm sorry for the technical difficulties this morning, but she's here no with us. She's a best-selling author, and she's here to talk about afterlife. Melissa, thank you so much, and thanks for staying with us. Thank you so much for having me. Tell me a little bit in a synopsis format about afterlife. So Blue Bloods Afterlife is the eighth book in the Blue Blood series, which started you know, almost uh, two decades ago, and it is a reboot of the original series about a group of teenage vampires who are fighting, you know, the most evil vampire of all, Lucifer, in New York City. You say it's the 13th in the series? This is uh, the 8th in the, the series? The 8th, I'm sorry, in the series. When you... Uh, create a series like this, does the main character, the protagonist, do they grow stronger? Absolutely. It's such a journey for the protagonist, Skylar Van Allen, who's the first half-human, half-vampire hybrid. And, you know, throughout the eight books, she changes so much. And she, you can watch her grow up in the books. And in the eighth book, Afterlife, which picks up you know, in an alternate universe where Skylar is a teenager again because she, you know, she grew up in the uh, first seven books and she discovers that she wakes up in our world in 2020 in the pandemic and perhaps vampires are behind it. <laughs> when you mix reality with fiction like this and you come up with this, this uh, soup in a sense, how does... How do the young readers act, react to it? You know, it's funny because I have a group of young teenage uh, readers who read the book in its development, and we call them beta readers in the industry, and they loved it. They thought it was so great that uh, my characters were experiencing the pandemic in the same way they were, um, and they felt like their lives were reflected in the story, even though it was about supernatural creatures and vampires and good and evil, they very much related to it. Um, but my adult uh, beta readers, they hated it. <laughs> they didn't want to read anything about the pandemic in a novel, in a fantasy novel. So it was very different. Um, the, but the teens loved it. At one time, there was a group of young people, they call them goths. And I know you know that. They wore black makeup, black lipstick, had, you know, that gothic-looking face. Is that something that inspired you to write this? Um, I don't know if it inspired me to write it. I mean, I was a little bit of a goth when I was a teenager, you know, and I was always kind of attracted to fantasy and the supernatural. Um, my family is Filipino and very superstitious. Uh, so, yeah, a little bit. I think my main, my main character, Skylar, is a little bit of goth, definitely. She wears thrift store clothes, she has very pale skin and dark hair. <laughs> so I would say uh, uh, a maybe. <laughs> what are you feeling about vampires and young people who are reading this? You know, I think vampires are a fun metaphor for growing up. You know, it's discovering your powers, discovering, um, you know, what you can do. It's like waking up the world and you know uh, finding your place in it and I think teens are attracted to vampires uh, because of that you know the the questions that they pose you know would you be immortal forever you know um, but you'd have to drink blood <laughs> so I think vampires are always something uh, that teens are drawn to absolutely. Melissa, usually I give away my author's books but your book already has already been given away 
So tell my audience where they can get a copy for themselves since they can't win a free copy from the Valder BB show. Well, you can buy Blue Bloods Afterlife wherever books are sold on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, your local indie bookstore. I'm going to take one question from Instagram before I uh, let my author, uh, Melissa, go. Melissa, uh, the poster wants to know, aren't you afraid? Let me see if I can rephrase this. She says, with, teen, with teens imitating so much, aren't you afraid that teens will imitate your book in Afterlife? Um, I don't think that they can really imitate being a vampire. So I, I think we're pretty safe from that. <laughs> I think that Melissa, teens <laughs> enjoy the fantasy. <laughs> Melissa De La Cruz, thank you so very much for stopping by the Val Beebe Show. It's been very interesting. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Good luck on your book tour. Hey, I'm Valder Beebe. I broadcast on radio, streaming TV, podcasts, and in print publications. I interview the world's most fascinating authors, all because I love a good book. This summer, I partnered with WPS for BB's Summer Book Giveaway. We're giving away New York Times bestsellers and award-winning books. Books that inspire me, and I'm sure they'll inspire you. To be eligible to win a copy of Jesus Can Give You a New Life, answer this question. What is God's greatest gift to mankind? You'll find the answer in John 3.16 of the Bible. Send your response to the email at the bottom of the screen. I'm Valder Beebe, and I'll see you for the next BB Summer Book Giveaway.